don't fumble. Watch what you say. Be careful. If you're going to open your mouth, make it true. Live from the parking sprouts of <laughs> Lots Farmers Market in Sacramento, California. Good morning. We are. I you like this every day, because I or just when I'm here. Just I, uh, I, I I just get you, you're so disarming. You di, you disarm well, me. You've been uncomfortable too for the last fifty some years. Sixty. No, years. I, you're you're so disarming. Yeah, oh I, my! I, I, I just want to gush. I, I blush. In my presence. In your yes, presence. Yes, I'll remember that. Yes. Anyway, we're only about a half hour late here this morning. Uh, it's but we're ahead of our time otherwise. We're, wow, you're full of, uh, you're full of Wherever words you're. of wisdom. There <laughs> she is, uh, the Polish princess. Okay. I'm only half Polish. The Swedish princess. I'm only a quarter Swedish. The, well, the Swidpole, Swidpole. A Costa Mesa princess. I'm not a princess. No, you're a queen. I, I'm a knight. You're a knight monk of Thelema. Oh, excuse me. Bless you. Okay, we'll turn I away. I on camera. Yes. But not on the camera. I made right. sure it was not sneezing on it. Okay. Uh-oh. So do you, do you need a tissue? Who knows? Oh, we'll see what we'll see what comes out. <laughs> okay, here I'll I'll turn it back no, on me. Okay, I do that. Okay, well. No, well, I'm not gonna blow my nose. Well, okay. well, you blow your nose. I'm not uh, blow. Okay. Well, we had a good class last night. It was very small. Very but, small. But uh, but we had time for uh, for for doing our class material, and then we had time for a uh, related conversations that we would not have had probably if the class were larger but maybe we would have yeah we digressed profusely but it was interesting yeah here i'm gonna get closer okay yes we had a good uh, conversation about uh who's on who's on first yeah <laughs> just uh th thelemic magical things in in general and the the idea about uh, 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 magical orders and the necessity or the non necessity for uh, stuff like that, right? Well, and uh, some, someone mentioned something about the the OTO, which you know we have been fifty years OTO of our life, and uh, is not a teaching order per se. And uh, I had to think about that. Uh, I did think about it, and then I thought, well, you know, it's a it's a learning order. It may not be a teaching order, but it, it's a learning order. But uh, yes, yes. It's not that you don't learn in it. Yeah, it's just not. It doesn't have a. And the thing is, you're supposed to know certain buzzwords. And. And things so you, so you, so birds of a feather can communicate together. Although you can usually do that, even if you come from different backgrounds, anyway. Sure. But, it's, but the initiations are worth it. But so we're a learning order. And, but uh, so I was thinking about um, sometimes when you have a, a a a set teacher that has a program of things you're supposed to do. Well, first of all, we used to have a. A hippie reading us, we'd tell people things to, to do to uh, evolve your consciousness. The st start, we, or at least how what we did, kind of. We started with uh, the hippie curriculum. Yeah, well, well, and other and other people. Alan Watts. Alan Watts mm -hmm. and uh, Yogi Ramacharaka, and autobiography of a yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and. The Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam and the Tao Te Ching and what else? Yi Ching. Yi Ching. And, uh, and, uh, and even uh, heck, heck, uh, 
uh, haiku poetry. Right, I mean, haiku. You know, but there's a zillion of, and uh, a background of that kind of, of, this is what hippies did in those days. And then, in fact, because everybody was doing it, the Beatles were doing it. So while, if, while you're reading, after you read that, especially the after a couple of years when they started to get just a little more psychedelic, the Beatles songs are all worthy of they're all worthy of uh, listening to with an uh, enlightened ear, shall we say. They're worthy of a hymnal. Yeah, yeah, they're worthy of a hymnal. And they teach you things. But most of all, they will remind you about what you read in the hippie curriculum. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and put it in different words and uh, and make it I mean, more accessible. Well, Crowley tried to do, uh, here, I'm going to turn this a little back to me. So. Uh, Crowley um, uh, did it with, uh, uh, like in Magic and Theory and Practice, uh, he has like the, a, the one star in sight, and uh, he has the, the, the AA curriculum, uh, or the AA reading list, and it was just a, a list, of a huge list of what uh, Crowley's hippie, Yes, his experience was. His, his hippie library, education, yeah. His classical education and his religious education, and of the time. But that's kind of what my problem with some of that stuff is, because I kind of would like to evolve into after the Book of the Law happened. Right. Thought, and it's, it's not that those things aren't a good basis, just like the hippie things are a good basis. But I could have read all that stuff before 1900. Yeah. So I'm happy to read it, but I don't want to, uh, I don't consider it absolutely necessary, even for birds of a feather to talk to each other. Uh, just a cursory, a lightweight ed education of that, as far as I'm concerned, will do. I would rather not spend my time having to, well, I suppose I'm wanting to cut to the chase more than now than I'm older, but, uh, uh, Study whatever you like, but I don't think you have to waste waste your time on earth studying something that that already um, you've probably outgrown the the, right. the thought processes. Of, or, I mean, there's part of everything is true from the bath the baby out with the bathwater, but also don't make that your concentration. You start remember that you're supposed to be have a little bit of new aeon thought here. Yes, and and uh, focus on your own development, on your own, your own growth. Here, I'm going to go this back to me. Uh, and uh, uh, it's fine and good to, to try to draw parallels in your life with uh, uh, what uh, other other magicians who you admire uh, did, but you're never going to be a carbon copy of of uh, of a uh, Crowley or a Mathers or a, or a, you're always going to be your uh, yourself and yourself alone. So the it was an interesting conversation. Uh, and I was I thought I was half stupid. Okay. You're gonna put me on camera on top of but um, and because you're not going to be one of them. Um, I was going to there for a minute uh, because I didn't interrupt you. Uh, <laughs> Because you're not one of doing that, uh, you have your own. Uh, you have your own curriculum that you know that that, that's, that, that counts, and uh, so you really have to think about that more. What and and don't and don't um, think that you're not learning from uh, maybe a movie you see or a book you read that not you wouldn't think would be related to. Your, that, uh, use everything that you've got. Don't just yeah. think that you're going to have to have, you know, a, a teacher read your diary or uh, and correct your, you know, sometimes cor correct what you're thinking. I mean, it's good to have. Correct your spelling. You know, That's well, my I problem. Do, well, I couldn't do that. Either, Hold on. You can't spell worth a shit. Yeah, and, and that's not uh, discipline like that is not bad because you're going, no. you were going to be a writer. I was going to be a writer, so it's yeah, exactly what I needed to hear. Yeah, yeah. but no, it's just um, anyway.
trust yourself sometimes with what you're supposed to learn. And uh, there is so much out there that has been uh, uh, written, in, including uh, uh, received uh, uh, documents or, or, or uh, you know, the equivalent in their own way of Crowley's cha more or less channeled uh, uh, material. That's what I was going to say. I, I'm lying. I, I forgot my train of thought before. Don't have to put it on. Okay. Um, I wouldn't change anything that was received, channeled, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Uh, a class A, what we call class A material in, in OTO uh, by Crowley. But I'll be happy. I'm happy to argue with even his choice of words or the fact uh, that he was a man of his time and probably a little bit of a misogynist and uh, definitely a colonialist and a racist and a bunch of other things <laughs> that, you know, that he doesn't even realize were uh, inappropriate because that's how, that's the environment he was raised in. And uh, so I don't have to, I don't have to live my life according to, to that stuff. I mean, I, that it's interesting. It shows that, you know, we all are a product of our times as well. And whatever we're saying now, we'll get, you know, in mm -hmm. 50 years will be not irrelevant, but it will be available to be tweaked. So it, it evolves with the times. Oh, Lon was such an insect bigot, swatting those mosquitoes. And oh. <laughs> Did, yes, probably not going to be did you problem. hear what he said about probably, cockroaches? They'll probably be extinct. The, yeah. No, the cockroaches are going to be No, cockroaches will live, outlive will, us all. That's right. They will. Okay. But we digress. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Fast. <too. laughs> that's what we do. Okay. Well, that's why Lon digresses and I interrupt. That's right. That's our, that's our, that's our, uh, Vaudeville. Modus, that's our modus operandi. Is we, Lon digresses and I, I, uh, Interrupt. That's our vaudeville act name. <laughs> Here they are, digression and interruption. <laughs> okay. I'm going to buy vegetables and other things, probably. Okay, and yeah. don't let me forget to get gas on the way home. Yeah. So, okay. Speaking of which, we had lentil soup late last We night. had lentil soup late last night, yes. Left That's what them. old people talk about. <laughs> Getting gas. <laughs> <clears throat> gas excitement. <clears throat> it's a little bit. Okay. Our conversations are a little more esoteric than that. But, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, go on in there. You're going to get cold. Are you going to be warm enough in the? I'm going to be frozen when I come back, just like I was from the co-op where I couldn't feel my hands. So, but now I'm hot, so it's good. Let's see. Uh, it's good. Let me get, uh, Let me, so. I'm going to say, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Why? Are you, are you not over? No. Well, love is the law, love under will. Okay. So I'll take the camera off, so I don't see you uh, stumbling out of the car, and and your your can of uh, malt liquor rolling out of your seat. I don't even know what that tastes like. I'm such a babe in the woods. I don't know what malt liquor tastes like. No, we're both teetotalers at the moment. Yeah. I used so. to like a little ouzo and a little stolichnaya. She's a can't you tell? Oh, I like a little ouzo and a shot of stolichnaya, room temperature. And uh, I used to like fine champagne because we had friends who were very generous and spumante. And every now and then, a couple times in my life, I had Kahlua and cream. Otherwise, I don't like sissy drinks. I like, you know, if you're going to drink, drink a shot of stoli. Yes. And I would knock back a canned martini before rushing into an Angels baseball game. And I'd shoot this. And you'd, and shoot, you'd, you'd shoot, shoot a shot of Stoli. Yeah. But that was a long time ago and for a very brief period of our lives. I, I was so much older then. I'm younger than that now. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, if we have anybody left that's still watching us. 
I don't know why. I have a poor thing. I have a couple things. I Ron has a real something plan. Oh, <laughs> and at that, my camera just fell right down on my steering wheel. Okay, I will let you. I'll come in there in a minute and uh, throw things in your shopping cart. Oh, you will not lie. I will. That'd be funny. <laughs> okay, this fell down again. I wonder what the problem is. Anyway. You didn't make a plan on how to hold it up? Uh, well, usually it, uh, ever since they fixed all of this interior stuff, they, <laughs> they made it slippery and... And and, uh, uh, and and stable. And it's sta used to being wobbly and falling apart. Right, and and now it's uh, the before it got fixed, um, the camera was held up just with pure filth, <laughs> and so the filth is gone, and now the camera slips around. <laughs> I I uh, have a good. I I don't know what to say. I have a good. Okay, darling. Sounds like your theory of life right there, but I don't want to say anything. No, okay. <laughs> Being the tidy one myself. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll start over. Live from the parking sprouts. Okay, she's off. And, um, oh, she's returning. Uh, so she's going through her purse. You looking for a mask? Is it black? It's black. Oh, I'll find it. Okay. Oh. It's not in here. Excuse us. For, uh, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. It's not on the floor? I don't see it on the floor, no. Oh, there it is, yes. Uh, thank you, I almost had it there. Anyway, part of the class last night was, um, well, uh, class yesterday, last night's uh, Monday Night Magic class, uh, we're going through the Thoth Tarot, and we were on the adjustment card. Uh, and, and it's a very, very, every one of the cards are extremely uh, interesting, and you could just do a three-year examination of, of every one of them. Uh, so even just dedicating a couple hours at the class is just scratching the surface. But uh, uh, the idea of adjustment rather than the, the, what people think of as uh, uh, the old idea of uh, judgment and justice, uh, it's a little more profound than that. And Crowley didn't like the word justice because it... Uh, uh, I mean, in relationship to it, that particular tarot card and its uh, and its meaning, with the Hebrew letter Lamed, uh, which is um, the second half of the the name of God, L, A L, Aleph, Lamed, the fool, the goddess Justice, their boyfriend and girlfriend. I talk about it a lot. And uh, in our tarot deck, they're, they're, they're both dancers. Uh, the form of the fool is, uh, is a ballet dancer in that leaping uh, pose. And he's in motley, uh, or at least uh, uh, countercharged uh, tights. And then the, the balance card is a... Uh, uh, a ballerina on tiptoe holding sc holding scales uh, out. They go together, and that, that the process of uh, adjustment is is a dynamic in and of itself that just more or less holds existence as we know it together in functioning. Now above the abyss, 
things are things are different, incredibly much smoother. Okay, but down here in the, in the bumpy road of uh, uh, manifestation, this uh, this uh, constant uh, flickering, if you will, of uh, uh, constant readjustment. You, you, Crowley mentions you can't drop a pin without a, making an effect, uh, a, a disturbing and it balances felt on the furthermost stars. Uh, so, so we had a wonderful, wonderful time. And I, uh, if you have a vision in the voice uh, or the, the, the new uh, the vision and the voice uh, with commentary, uh, right in the very beginning of it, uh, you see a, a summary of the 30 Aethers. And uh, uh, sort of uh, the, the high points. Now, many of the vis Crowley's visions of the Aethers uh, uh, included uh, a foretaste because this was early on, a foretaste of the imagery that Crowley would, uh, would uh, uh, suggest to Frida Harris way up in the late 30s and, and uh, uh, early 40s for the tarot deck, the Thoth tarot deck. Like, like one of the Aethers is uh, uh, the, the charioteer that, uh, appears in... in uh, and even though the message of the vision was pertaining specifically to, to Crowley's uh, uh, own initiatory journey, okay, like when you would scry an Enochian Aether, it'll be a highly personal thing to you, okay? But there will be aspects of universal dynamics representing your spiritual or initiatory journey that's applicable universally. I hope I, I probably didn't make that clear. But uh, uh, the goddess justice, as described uh, in the Thoth Tarot, is first revealed in the 17th Aether, Tan, T-A-N, which in the Enochian language means justice. And it's so almost quaint that Crowley's vision of that Aether, now remember they're out in the North African Sahara in December, <laughs> Under the stars, this one started like at 11 o'clock or something, at night, doing Enochian magic, doing the call, uh, doing the preparation to the call, whatever he and Victor were, were up to. Obviously it worked. And uh, then he'd do the call and receive the vision. Okay, and Victor would be uh, taking notes. Uh, it starts off with a character from the John D. and Edward Kelly operations way back in the 1580s, they had a, a special spirit that not only appeared to them in vision or appeared to one of them in vision or the other one in vision, this spirit actually popped out into the room and both of them were conversing with it and it was a little girl a little girl spirit called Medimi and Medimi was was quite a character and and if you read D, D's diaries uh, uh, she she comes in and out of the situation she's got a family she got an angel family, and there's the mother of Medimi and things like that. And uh, but this vision 
actually starts off with uh, Medimi at the very beginning of the of the vision, Medimi appearing, and she didn't appear like a little girl. She she identified herself as Medimi and everything else, and and Crowley was wondering, wow, this you're not you're not quite like uh, you know I I would expect from reading the D material. And she says something that is worthy to remember as an epigraph to absolutely everything you do in life. And here's what she said. Since all things are God, in all things thou seest just so much of God as thy capacity affordeth thee. Can you see how that would be a perpetual background meditation 24 hours a day for you to eventually get a glimpse of right where you are in your capacity to see the big picture. Since all things are God, in all things thou seest just so much of God as thy capacity affordeth thee. You often hear of uh, people saying, well, he did the best he could according to his light. We'll take that to the nth degree. Okay, I'm looking at that coffee cup. I'm looking at that guy in the old Navy t-shirt there. And I'm seeing only so much of, as, of God as my capacity affordeth me. So that's how the vision starts. So she says, you're going to have to really go deep into this aether, uh, Mr. Crowley if you're going to get the goodies out of it. And as you read on in um, the cry of the, the 17th Aether, Tan, uh, you'll see just how, how far he did get. Okay. Um, in keeping with uh, what Constance and I were talking about, uh, about uh, being a private magician or a uh, a magician involved in a in a group, or uh, somebody with a formal teacher, or uh, or what? Uh, it's it's easy for us in retrospect here, 50 years later. It's easy for us to uh, to say, oh no, you you do everything your, yourself. Okay, no matter what you're involved in or anything else, uh, you are your own master. Okay, and you're the only master uh, capable of actually judging where the fuck you are on your climb toward enlightenment. It's easy for us to say that now. But we, uh, I joined, joined the Rosicrucians and joined uh, Amwark, okay, and for a while, uh, uh, you know, studied their programs and was involved in the, in their ceremonial rituals, and and then I uh, sort of blended in and went into the the Martinists. Okay, I enjoyed the Martinists uh, very much. It's very mystical. Okay, and it's the first uh, uh, time I actually get, got to see somebody draw a pentagram with a sword. is pretty pretty neat. And then, uh, you know, I studied the BOTA lessons, but, and, but when I joined the OTO, I joined a, a real magical order that, uh, uh, whose work was along the same lines as the, first of all, the exoteric work of the Freemasons, okay? There's thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of Freemasons all, all around the world. And not all of them, 
as a matter of fact, uh, just a small percentage, are esoteric Freemasons that are interested in the, the esoteric applications of the, of the symbols, not only as philosophical uh, uh, tools and, and weapons, but as an actual language for spiritual self-transformation. The OTO uh, is patterned in the same way. Wonderful, insanely cool initiation ceremonies that that uh, uh, where the the candidate is the, is the star, and they're written in such a way. They're Crowley's best magical work, but you're not in there drawing pentagrams and and screaming out divine names and and. Uh, you know, there's invocations, but the Masons have invocations too. Yeah. There's something else going on. There's something else that's provided by the uh, an experience such as that and an order such as that. Okay, and the the wonderful thing about the the, the OTO, you know, compared to the Masons, is most everybody in the OTO is on some kind of personal program of magical practice. And you have people to talk to, okay? Yeah, people that speak the same vocabulary as you. But the OTO is not reading your diary. The OTO is not presuming uh, to do anything except you just uh, 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 behave yourself, show up on on your initiation day and process that experience however uh, you need to. And of course there's classes and collateral uh, uh, activities and stuff. But you, they don't presume to issue you a teacher that you, uh, or, or, even, or even a mentor, okay? And everybody more or less is, is or should be uh, operating on the same plane, okay? So the AA is a, a, a little different matter because the, Crowley saw the AA as the, as the teaching organization. And um, uh, that, all of that AA material, Crowley published its open source. Okay, you can do it yourself. As a matter of fact, even when you are connected with a, a, a formal teacher or somebody that you accept as a formal teacher, uh, you're still doing it all yourself. Okay, and it's been my experience that you learn everything in spite of your mentor's efforts, not because of them. Okay. Uh, a number of years ago, someone wrote me and said, uh, uh, I was introducing a friend of mine to some Thelemic works a few days ago, and he asked a question I didn't see a clear answer to. So, that's how he wrote it. So, do you have to practice magic to be a Thelemite? I mentioned that a Thelemite is one who accepts the law and is actively pursuing the discovery of one's true will. The comedic difficulty came in his response. Oh, all right. Then what's the real point of doing it? I would say that that's thelemite material right there. Okay. I mean, I like thelema, but I don't see any reason to go through all of this really hard material to find my true will. And then you have the whole hierarchy thing with the AA and the OTO. That's the, that's the question that was asking. He said, I explained, of course, that the great work can be done as an individual, just as you said. However, I was still left with the, that inability to understand how oftentimes difficult to study Kabbalah, Enochian, and just about any other practice with its heavy doses of symbolism, how 
difficult to study is really sensible in finding the true will. Any advice here? Thanks in advance. Okay. Dear Name Withheld, in my opinion, in order to personally and privately, though when you think of it, existence itself is personal and private, In my opinion, in order to personally and privately consider oneself a Thelemite, it is not necessary to practice any of the techniques of magic, belong to any initiatory society, or subscribe or enmesh oneself in the study of any religion, doctrine, or philosophy other than that of seeking to discover and then do one's will. I think it's safe to say that uh, by this definition, most people on the planet who are successfully discovering and executing their wills do not realize, nor do they need to, that they are Thelemites, or that there's a name for what they are, or what they are doing is magic of the highest order. It doesn't matter if they consider themselves Christians, Jews, Muslim, or atheist. If they've discovered and are doing their wills, they're really Thelemites, deep down. After all, the statement is, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, not know what thou wilt, or learn what thou wilt, or study what thou wilt, or fantasize what thou wilt, or identify oneself as thou wilt. That being said, it's also my opinion that in order to publicly and purposefully, I love all those P's, to publicly and purposefully identify yourself as a Thelemite and represent oneself as an adherent to the religious philosophy known to the world since 1904 as Thelema, one need only accept Liber Al Vel Legis, the Book of the Law, without wishing to make changes in it and be engaged in a perpetual process of living life as much as possible according to one's current comprehension of the text. Since all things are God, in all things thou seest just so much of God as thy capacity affordeth thee. That being said, it is my opinion that if one perceives it to be one's will to embark consciously upon the step-by-step -step path of spiritual initiation, the path followed by aspirants and holy men and women of every age, it is vitally important, as it always has been, to attune the process with the spiritual formula that is presently in harmony with humanity's current level of consciousness. <clears throat> and here's where we have uh, what is described as the magical formula of aeons. So every period of time, every few thousand years or so, uh, or longer or, or short of uh, there is a basic shift in human consciousness that it, 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 and it happens universally uh, as if all of a sudden uh, within a, a short period of time, a hundred years or 200 years, uh, everyone on earth more or less knows that the earth goes around the sun instead of the sun going up and down. Okay. That, that, that one little added bit of information that's universally accepted uh, affects a change in consciousness uni universally. So we've got the aeon of Isis and the aeon of Osiris and the aeon of, of, of Horus. So whatever your magic is, what, whatever way that you uh, uh, proceed to uh, execute your will should be in harmony with, with that latest formula rather than uh, uh, trying to... Um, 
uh, trying to s squeeze your career into uh, 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 an, out an outdated formula. Not that the old formulas didn't work in their own way, but the new one works so much better. So no matter what you do, you want to uh, be in harmony and in sync uh, with uh, the spiritual formula that's presently in harmony with the current level of consciousness. How this is done need not be that difficult. In fact, the easiest way to understand the nature of the present spiritual formula is by studying the formula of the past as expressed in re religious and magical rituals. So to get a peek at the trajectory of where we're at, yeah, acquaint yourself with what the old formula was like, okay? This is what connects the law of Thelema to personal initiation and magical practices. One of the greatest gifts Aleister Crowley bequeaths to humanity is a body of rituals and mystical literature built upon the initiatory formulae of the past, but now tweaked to bring them in line with the formula of the new aeon. To identify as a Thelemite at this level, one must be like the Tibetan monk on the path to Lamahood perform the disciplines, do the homework, study the literature, do the rituals, and live the life until such time as one becomes an integral part, expression, and manifestation of the formula itself. I hope this has been helpful. Okay. That's the parking lot sermon of the day. I, I hope uh, uh, at least a few of you stuck with us this, uh, uh, this whole time. We've gone well over our half hour uh, that we usually do. Uh, so until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.